Lynn Gilderdale is 15 years old. She's imprisoned by paralysis, mental confusion and pain. Her memory is so bad, she can't recognize her family each morning. She lies in semi-darkness, avoiding the light that hurts her eyes, shutting out the noise that hurts her ears. And yet the hospital says there's nothing physically wrong. It's all in her mind. Lynn has an illness known as ME, myalgic encephalomyelitis, or post-viral fatigue syndrome. The less charitable call it yuppie flu, psychosomatic attention-seeking, over-breathing, or just malingering. I know how she feels. Like Lynn, I also have ME. Seven years ago, I was able to work full-time in a busy hospital. And I used to enjoy hill walking and climbing and sailing at weekends, and I had a very busy life. Then I got a severe throat infection, coupled with severe muscle pains all over and muscle spasms, and this left me unable to walk properly for several months. It also blasted my brain so that I couldn't think and I got terrible confusion. And I used to weep for no reason at all. Fortunately, I'm very much better. I'm nearly recovered, but I still have a lousy memory and there are bad days when my speech slurs a bit and I can still fall over. Having ME like Lynn means you have to fight two things, the illness and the prejudice. Deep down, the root of the problem lies with the medical profession itself, and I think is their inability to deal with things they don't understand. It's difficult to say what's typical, but one doctor, who didn't know I had ME, explained his views to me, but didn't discuss individual cases. The one absolutely clear-cut clinical feature of the disease is the personality profile of the people who develop it. Many of them have profound psychosexual difficulties with partner relationships and, and life in general. Uh, and they... Uh, they're people who are just aren't very happy with the life situation that they find themselves in. Now, we, you know, most of us would say, well, I, I, you know, I recognise that in myself, if you like, but it's a question of how you react to it. In, in one particular instance I came across recently uh, where the father said that if he peeled the potatoes for dinner, he was completely exhausted for several days. Now, I do not believe for one moment that that reflects organic dysfunction of any aspect of the nervous system from the motor cortex down to your fingertips. I think that is bound to be, to use a colloquial phrase, in the mind. Celebrating it. Oh, she looks so happy and alive. She does. She certainly does. Mm. Talking to Lynn's parents, you realise how many doctors believe it's all in the mind and how desperate this makes people with ME feel. Consultants. I think their attitude was ME is something where you are tired and if you start developing other symptoms and they go on and on then you've not got ME, you've got hysteria or you've got some other psychiatric problem maybe because they don't know what to do about it, there's nowhere for them to turn. Oh, we felt at a time was they wouldn't admit if they didn't know. We had terrible trouble getting hold of contacting people for advice, for help. We felt totally isolated and we were frightened. We didn't know what was going on with Lynn and, she, and as, as was she, she was petrified. She felt she was dying, she said that to us on many occasions, she was dying and for us to help her. It's hard to believe Lynn was once an energetic schoolgirl who spent her time swimming and playing tennis. Now she's so ill she's unable to swallow food and has to be fed through a tube up her nose. When you get nurses who, are, who say to you, well, I know, you know, she, she can do that if she wants to. How do they know? How do they know? How can we even begin to prove to them that Lynn is very ill? what we've seen her go through when they've got closed minds like that probably in the whole history 
of medicine, people and um, medics have been very slow to accept anything that they can't see proof of. And they can see maybe Lynn's ill, but they can't do a test and have it in writing. Thank you. How's that, Lynn? Right. You'll feel better once you have something in your tongue. Okay. We don't need Lynn to prove to us that she's ill. We know she's ill. Having seen Lynn and how ill she is, I'm absolutely baffled. I cannot understand how any doctor could call her condition hysteria. I still can't understand why so many doctors dismiss ME, particularly in such severe cases. They should get inside my body and experience how sick and poisoned I can feel. The trouble is that some doctors only believe an illness exists if they have laboratory proof.